I'm back again, and this time, I'm better than ever. You know why? Because this time, I'm in sepia tone. I mean, because this time, it's like a dream. Oh, it's like a dream. You're dreaming. Oh, I'm just kidding. I'll be normal. That's fine. I see Sweden. I see France. I see someone's underpants. Actually, I just see Sweden and France playing soccer on the TV. I don't see anyone's underpants at all, to be honest. Oh, they called a foul, though. That goal's not going to count by the ladies of Sweden. The ladies of France are competing against the ladies of Sweden. Who will win? Nobody knows. Good morning. Good morning to you. I believe it's Ivar. But I will obviously need to pull this up on the big screen to see for sure who it might be. It is Ivar. Followed by Daniel Berry. Sports highlights and little stitch in the house. Ivar is always rooting for the French to lose. Well, I you know I don't really have a strong preference between Sweden and France in women's soccer. Sweden won the last World Cup, you know, so they're they're the favorites. When I don't really have a preference, normally I root for the underdog. But in this instance, I'm not sure. <sighs> Maybe I'm fine with Sweden winning anyway. So I got up not a super long time ago. I don't really have a favorite color, but brown's fine. I'm wearing brown today. Ayu, what do you think about Australian footy? Well, I mean, I was certainly rooting for the Australian women's team in the last World Cup once the U.S. got knocked out. But unfortunately... I believe they lost to the Swedes, right? <sighs> I'm a big fan of uh, World Cup soccer, be it men's or women's. I think it's a very exciting event. You know. No, I'm not a boomer, actually. I'm squarely Generation X. We're the forgotten generation, Bob. Everybody thinks it goes straight from millennial to boomer. Well, believe it or not, if you're a millennial, all of your uh, all of your heroes are actually Gen X, probably. You know, you're Dr. Dre, you're Eminem, etc. Hi, Chris Chapman. Uh, how's it going? <laughs> it's supposed to go from millennial, then Gen X, then Boomer. <laughs> But a lot of people seem to think that it goes uh, Millennial Street to Boomer. Bob, unfortunately for you, that's so unbelievably unoriginal. I've heard it so many times now that it's made my bingo card of unoriginality. So you're going to have to try to be slightly more clever than that. Otherwise, you're just appallingly boring. And there's really nothing else that could be worse than that. I didn't just go to the moon, no. But I'm, I'd like to try to get to the moon, if possible. I don't get to the moon that easily, unfortunately. You know, I woke and boke earlier. Oh, yeah, I'll join you for sure. 
I'm packing mine too. I just got up from a nap, so you know I'm ready to smoke some bowls. The plumber called me to start and work today. I'm pleased with that. We may or may not be able to avoid this additional six hundred dollar permit. <laughs> we'll find out. He's also he probably has me. He's so old, he probably has Methuselah's number. Well, I guess that's a little bit better. Um, but, you know, it's also on the bingo card of unoriginality, oldness. Yeah. Methuselah, not specifically. I'll concede that. Salut à ti. Salut à ti. I'm watching the French women's team right now. <laughs> Oh yeah, still well below average. Even for people wanting to come in and troll. So try again, Bob. I have confidence in you. I have faith that you'll come up with something a little bit better than that. Poverty won't hurt, no. Probably will help. Usually does. Ganja? Yeah, I am smoking ganja. That's right. Breaking up these little buds here. I'll just play. <coughs> <coughs> I need to get more buds from the freezer to put on the plate. Yes, I live in California. So, it's legal for me. Hi, the Blue Baron. <laughs> Well, Jack, are you any relation, perhaps, to Mike? No, I... I don't think so. Yeah, I live in the great state of Jefferson. Thank you very much, Blue Baron. Good job, Brian Brewer. What do I feel? Not a whole lot. I smoke a lot of weed, so... It's not that easy for me to get high, you know. Not in Texas. No, weed's not legal in Texas. But it is in California, where I live. I live here in Mariposa County, California. Up in the mountains, near Yosemite. Where the deer and the antelope play, you know. California is named after Oprah Winfrey. Fun fact. Wow. That is a fun fact. Your lungs give up before you do? Me too. Well, yeah, I did live in Colorado. All right. Now, let's. Turn this table around so I can get a regular lighter this time. Let's see if I can pull this bowl without poking it all the way through. Looks like the French co coach got a red card. 58%? That's pretty high. We'll say the... I don't have a testing fetish, you know. I don't necessarily believe that the weeds that test highest are best. <coughs> yeah, totally, Anthony. We totally can. We'll go out on a double date. We can hang out. Come over here and chill with us. Absolutely. I right, just need to meet with you on video conference first to make sure you're you're not a you know. Yeah. Well, that's good, Brian Brewer. That's good. 
Uh, well, we're we're on a number of field trips today. Yeah, a British person could buy weed in California, sure, as long as you have ID that shows you're over twenty one. Oh, you got YouTube videos. Oh, I could check out your videos. Then. Sounds good. We can still chat by a video conference. It's, it'll be pleasant enough anyway. I'm glad I saw you here today, Brian Brewer. Glad you stopped by. You just got to be 21, is right. So if you have a passport or something that says you're over 21, you're fine. Rachel used to go. Uh, I, I do live in a beautiful place. It's lovely up here. Um, uh, I, what was I about to say? <laughs> I guess I have a lot. Oh yeah, Rachel, she's from New York, you know, and, um, she used to get to the, go into the weed store with her passport all the time, so I know it works. She could even go in with her New York driver's license. So. Oh, there they are. so, yeah, it's really nice around here right now. Um, we could, we had snow not very long ago. And now, uh, the snow hasn't even completely melted yet, but it's actually quite pleasant and warm outside. I'm sorry to bother you squirrels, but, while you're eating your cutlets, but I'm gonna come over here, see if we can catch a little view of the stream, maybe. See the stream. We're gonna zoom in over there. Yeah, you can totally see it, right? You can totally see the stream. Trickling away down there. What's the house cost there? This one cost five hundred thousand dollars. That's how much this house cost. Four ninety five. Five hundred fully furnished. But the house we bought down the street was only two seventy five. Obviously, it's not as nice a house, and it's on a smaller lot. Yeah, it's not bad, right? The house we sold in LA was a lot worse house. We sold it for 1.2 million. All right. UBBL. I should put up a basketball hoop in the driveway. I mean, it's not a terrible idea, actually, what he got. It's not a terrible idea. I could play basketball. All right, let's go move my feet. They're in the shade right now. Then I think to do it I like to move them around so they stay in the sunlight obviously this part stays in the shade more because it still has snow there but there's no snow over there So, you know, hopefully they grow up big and strong. 
healthy. We've had a bit of a rough beginning to life because as soon as they got them transplanted into the big pots, we had a change in weather. It snowed and I had to, you know, keep them inside for a whole day or more in the garage. It was cold, you know. I avoided them getting freezing, but... Am I retired? Yeah, I'm more or less retired. I wouldn't call myself entirely retired, but... You know, I'm still, obviously, trying to do things to make sure the money we have makes more money than the money we spend, right? I'm trying to, uh, trying to establish a positive cash flow. So that means rental properties. And we're in the middle of setting up our first one. The reason I'm awake right now, rather than back asleep taking more nap, is because the plumber called about the septic to the other place, which we need to get fixed. Which we need to get fixed in, in order to, well, I mean, just, it's like, before we start renting it. In theory, we could have started renting it right then, without it all the way fixed. It was still, it was still working enough that you could use it, but. Yeah, thanks, Anthony, I appreciate it. It's, it's kind of all new to me and kind of familiar from a long time ago. But, um. All right, get the chopping on the chores. Fair enough, putty cat. Fair enough. Putty cat's right. I need to get some chores accomplished. After all, what is the point of living in a fancy house if you don't keep it clean? Well, friends, let me show you how we're gonna keep this house clean because it's got a fancy feature that if you've not seen it before, I think you're gonna be very excited to know about. Come on, come with me. This is what we call the vacuum closet. It also has a broom in here. Uh, it would be not unwise of me to start by doing a little broom. Let me start by doing a little grooming. Get back there, you. Here. I'm going to start with a little grooming before we get out of the vacuum. So, one way in which trouble, our cat is trouble, is that he sheds a great amount of hair. More hair than you'd imagine any cat ever being able to shed. But our cat manages to shed like an entire cat's worth of hair a day. So, we got these big clumps of cat hair. This is too big to <laughs> Hang on. Skip the sweeping portion. I, this is already too difficult. I'm going to use the vacuum like God intended. As far as this stuff, I'll put this in the trash. And then this hair flies off of me. You see how much trouble that cat is? Just Forget sweeping. Sweeping's way more difficult than vacuuming. All right, so vacuuming the nets. <laughs> you might say, Eric, 
that's going to be so loud and horrible? Well, it's not going to be nearly as loud and horrible as you think. Thanks to our whole house vacuum. Hooray! That's right. I'll just plug this tube here into this hole right here as a permeable. There. Now, I'll just come over here to this. I'll turn it on like this. And I can start vacuuming away. Vacuuming. One of the primary benefits of vacuuming is that it picks up all the little shit on the floor. Alright. Observe and enjoy as I vacuum away the ground. Now I could get an attachment for this, but I find that this is really about as good as anything. Alright, we're doing great work here, vacuuming stuff up. You know what's wonderful about this vacuuming experience? That I can't say about every vacuuming experience? I'll tell you right now. Because I'm wearing my overalls, because I'm wearing my overalls, I do not have to worry about my pants falling down throughout the entirety of this process.
this? We certainly are. All right, let's come over here more. We certainly have plenty more vacuum to do. Obviously, this thing has a lot of stuff on it. So rather than trying to vacuum it, I'm going to carry it outside and shake it out. You know, a lot of people seem to love him, Chris Chapman. He's a popular guy. Okay. All right, now let's vacuum right here, shall we? going to come loose and fall out. You don't need to worry about that. I should title this dream, Watch an Old Man Vacuum. It is 
get all the bonus work. Any stuff I get done when I'm not on the impediment got the bonus work. say it's break time. It's time for a break. It's break time. Isn't anyone at work other than this guy? Nobody has better shit to do. I'm not at work. I'm just <laughs> vacuuming my, my house. Uh, yeah. I don't really consider that being at work. What's going on here? Well, I was vacuuming. What sports do I... Do I like? I am currently watching women's soccer. France is beating Sweden one to nothing. Thanks, play cat. I will take a break. So, obviously, I vacuumed that part of the floor, but I will say this: if I want it to actually be clean, I'm gonna need to mop it. So, am I going to mop it today? Eh, maybe. Mopping might sound like a later today thing. It might sound like a tomorrow thing. But I'm not done vacuuming yet, so. You know, this question of. I, okay, I could put. I could put a. Uh, I could put a. Different attachment on it. It might make it more efficient. Well, you're one of them, Kenneth Webb. You are one of the famous people. By virtue of talking to me here now, you become a famous person. That's the qualification for being a famous person. There aren't that many of them in the world, but... No, I don't have an attorney to draft up lease paperwork. I can print that out myself. And I'm not necessarily sure we're going to even be leasing. We might just be month to month running. Well, I'm in the process of setting up uh, rental properties. So I guess the answer to that is be a landlord. Uh, you know, it's not all done being set up yet. We have, we have a property down the street that we bought 
and we're gonna run it up long term rental. Yeah, I know. The thing is about that putty cat. Um, we should have. Well, we'll see what happens. You know, we'll see what our choice of renters looks like. Um, we should have a, a fair amount of, of you know, pick of the litter because, uh, because there's a there's very little supply for long term rentals here in Mariposa. Almost everybody who buys property like this sets it up to be, um a vacation rental so when properties like this are put up for long-term rental you're going to get a lot of um no i do not have an only fans i don't want only fans that's silly uh i checked weed a good weed a month month ago Ha, still mad all day. Permanent marker too good. Well, you know, to each their own. I am not going to open it on the fans. Putty Cat suggests that I run a background and credit check on applicants, not foolproof, but it helps mitigate some of your risk. Yeah, of course. Um. Yeah, well, BLB, the specifics of it are I inherited an estate and am currently in the process of, of basically moving from one, an investment portfolio into rental properties so that we can have a more it's basically an easier to account. It's easier on accounting for me, you know? Like, I can understand more clearly. This is our, this is, you know, this is our positive cash flow, et cetera. So that's what I'm doing right now. And it takes some time to get these things done. Like, you know, we bought this property. We closed escrow sometime in, I mean, I don't want to have an OnlyFans account. I'm sure Rachel does not want me to have an OnlyFans account. If I wanted to whore myself for money, I would do so here, you know? I would, like, turn on every possible revenue stream thing. I'd, uh, you know... Solicit donations, solicit super chats, etc. I don't feel like even doing that, let alone opening OnlyFans. I've got a decade invested into YouTube. I like YouTube. It's my home away from home. It's my home while I'm at home, you know? It's a very comfortable place for me to hang out no putty cat <laughs> obviously we're not interested in doing anything illegal i don't want to have an only fans you two were your friends without the actual obligation of having friends. Yeah, really, that's one way to put it. You know, it's like, one thing I can't help but like about YouTube is the way that, uh, the way that, you know, people can come and go as they see fit. They don't need to say hi or bye. Some people do anyway. Maybe she'll just sleep. She'll probably get up pretty soon. That's why I said let's do chores and make lunch. Because I figure at the time I'm done doing some chores. And uh, I'm ready to start making some lunch. 
so that she'll be up and ready to start eating some lunch, you know. I'm not sure what I'm going to make. I could just make regular salami sandwiches. I think that doesn't sound too bad. If I did it, well, I don't know if we have any onion. We don't have any real onion. Well, yeah, I mean, in America, too, it's generally considered rude. But I, I think that there's an exception here in this instance. Because, after all, here I am live streaming all day, doing whatever I feel like. It's only natural for people to be curious about how I make money. I'm obviously not making much money off of YouTube, or else you'd be hearing me say, Come on, guys, super chat. I think it's a perfectly reasonable question. I have no problem answering it, because... Uh, that's how I live, you know, I live my life transparently and openly. I won't answer questions about specific numbers and stuff, although I did answer earlier a question about how much houses are, how much this house costs, you know. It's public record anyway. If anybody wanted to look it up, they could look it up. So, uh, regardless, uh, I don't like to talk about finances too much, but uh, I'm not unwilling to answer those kind of questions. So, that's why. That's why I'm able to do this. No, no, I threw that salami out. We got new salami. But the other thing, though, is uh, Rachel and I were both talking yesterday about going into town today. So, it's it's plausible that I should just wait for her to get up and then... Um, you know, oh, you cheaters. You French cheating cheaters. Stop being, yeah, thank you for yellow carding that. Thank you for yellow carding that. Those cheating French. Oh, red cards. You got red carded. Out you go, Vicky Betcho. You're a real Betcho for pulling that move, too, I got to say. Uh, I, I just get the pre-sliced salami. I think it is hard salami originally, but it's not hard when it's when it's sliced into slices and they become floppy, you know, because they're thinly sliced. Put a small amount of cream cheese on the salami and dip it in balsamic vinegar. Hmm. <laughs> no, I'm not converting to Islam. <laughs> I don't think that's rude either, BLB. I don't think you were being too rude in this instance. I think in general that like, he's right. If we were just you were just talking to somebody IRL. But you know. I should make a pastrami Swiss sandwich with some horseradish mustard. Well, this is the thing, Anthony, is we don't have all these myriad ingredients that one might imagine one might make for lunch, you know. We have the small amount of ingredients we have. Well, it looks as though there's cheating French beat the Swedes. <laughs> oh, look, there's another soccer yeah. game on right now. It's Leeds United versus Sunderland. No, we have to go to town. We need to go to the hardware store, too. We need to buy this certain kind of sign. Or else the fire department gets mad at us. No, we don't have any liverwurst, putty cat. Obviously, we don't have liverwurst. Yeah, there are cultural differences. It's true. Right now, I'm watching a cultural difference called British soccer. I remember in my answer to your question, would you guys say someone called you rude? They would be correct. <laughs> uh, I self-identify as Christian. And I pray regularly. But I wouldn't call myself religious. 
This is the newest fashion trend for 2025 and beyond. Oh no, it's called soccer, Alexandre. Football is reserved for real American football, okay? I love your your uh, European soccer, okay? Obviously, I'd rather watch European soccer than I would watch MLS, which is just a cheap knockoff of European soccer. There's no reason to watch MLS. But, I, yeah, if you guys want to know the hip new trend for 2025, it's this nose circle. And, like, if you got a grill, you can turn it this way and then use this to lift up your upper lip to show off your grill. I'm thinking about getting my three teeth emblazoned in gold with P-I-M-P. What do you think? Well, the, the one zine, it's because I lead the world's fashion trends, that's why. It's because I'm always setting the next trend. It's what I do. And right now, the next trend is this. This is the hot look for 2025. Right, I'm an influencer. How do you think I make my money? I'm an influencer. I influence people to do this. You know. When I go... When I go... uh Oh, well, I mean, you gotta, you just gotta get smaller letters. P, I, M on one. Okay. P. Or maybe P, I, M, P. That might work as well. Anyway. Are we starting a cult? Well, it's kind of like a cult, except it's called the Fun Friends Gang, okay? Um, it's called the Fun Friends Gang, and it's not really like a cult, except in that instead of having, like, a charismatic leader, we're just all a bunch of fun friends. And instead of doing, like, weird cult stuff, we just do fun friend stuff, like play frisbee, you know, go out to eat. <laughs> Sean Al admits to something that a lot of people wouldn't admit to I'm not lying he says Eric isn't because Sean fashioned his look off the Tiffany trend by ripping off his own arm and replacing it with PVC that's right that is the hot new it's one of the hot new looks no no friends with benefits in the fun friends gang it's a purely platonic Ah, uh, what's, what's sibling with, like, instead of sororal, sorority, or fraternal, you know, fraternity, um, what's the word mean? Siblinghood. It's a siblinghood of fun friends, okay? And our goal is to be nice. And and fun. That's all. Yeah, thanks, Anthony. Is I influenced him to give me a dollar ninety nine with my powerful ways. <laughs> ah, should we continue doing chores? Gosh, that sounds like not that fun. It's not a really fun friends gang thing to do. You know, it doesn't mean that chores shouldn't be done. If the Fun Friends Gang were to do chores, everybody would say, come on, guys, we'll all chip in and it'll be done lickety split. And then we'd all sing a fun song while we do chores. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go have a fun health tube outside. What would I do if YouTube was going to shut down? Oh, I'd be super sad. I don't know what I'd do. I guess I'd have to go to some other platform. No, we don't pick our fun friends' noses, okay? Everything can be fun, even chores, if we have a fun song to go along with it, you know? Anyway. The nice thing about this, this fashion nose circle is it's a dual-use implement. When you're not using it as a news circle, 
You can use it as a monocle. See? I can put this up here and accomplish some kind of weird yin yang thing. Well, it's like this. What? There's a white one on top of the black one? What? That's so yin and yang. The mystical power of these twist ties is blowing my mind. Right? But where or where are my health tubes? We'll have to go look for them. Come on. You guys left them inside someplace. You're my freighter? What? What is my freighter? Is that an ex-wife effigy? No. Uh, twist tie guy. The one made out of black twist ties. He's a long-standing guard of the house. He stood guard out here for quite some time. He prevents bad juju and other such things from getting into the house. Yeah, I uh, see the juju coming my way. I'm just like, pyow, motherfucker, get out of here, bad juju. Get out of my way. I'm twist tie guy. It's just like, pyow. I got lightning fast karate fit karate hands. And I'm not gonna let any bad juju get up in this place. I also oppose bad juju. However, I have no arms and my legs are very, very tiny. Your legs could be a little bigger. Yeah, that's a little bit better, thank you. Thanks, appreciate it. You know what, that's, that's even better. I really appreciate it now. You're really kicking ass and taking names there, Eric. Uh, I don't need your condescension. <laughs> Twist tie guy number two. I wasn't trying to be condescending. I was just uh, appreciating your handiwork. Okay, we both know my handiwork is crap. Don't need to lick my butthole. All right, all right, no reason to get all sensitive. I'm just saying maybe one day you can make me a pair of arms. Oh, I see. Now you're getting greedy. Now you want arms, huh? Well, I don't mean to be the only one to point it out, but the other twist guy guy who happens to be black, I'm not saying you're racist, he has arms. All right, I'll get you some arms. Thanks. Thank you. Don't expect it to happen anytime soon, though, okay? Oh, no, I know how you work, Eric. I know. It's going to be a while. It'll just be until I find a white twist tie, all right? If it's that soon, I'll just be amazed and really, really pleased. Are you a twist tie guy? I'm a twist tie girl, obviously. You forgot to make breasts as well. Maybe you can make that when you make my arms. Oh, I guess that's why you're smaller than Twist Tie Guy. Um, and I wish you wouldn't leave us in such an intimate position. We just barely are getting to know each other. <laughs> you got a little jungle fever, huh, Twist Tie Girl? <laughs> uh, excuse me, I just made out of black Twist Ties. My race is actually Korean. Oh, don't they pronounce you any that, Twist Tie Guy? So anyway, we're waiting for Rachel to get up. If you want an unhappy Rachel, get her up prematurely. Unless there's some kind of serious emergency, just forget about it.
Let's go see if the propane people came today. They did, which they might have, like, while I was sleeping. They would have left a receipt in a bag around here somewhere. I don't see one. Ergo, they did not come. Let's go look at the level of propane we have in the propane tank, shall we? Rachel told them 30. I told her it was a little below 30. I wish she had said 25. I don't think they're going to fill it up all the way now. Well, now we're down to 20. See? I want her to call JS West today and tell them, please update it to, to put another 10 in and charge us for it now because it's at 20. I knew we were burning through it right now. It's been cold, unseasonably cold. I am getting to be such an old man like my father that I noticed when the heater cycles on. I'm like, oh, God, we're burning more propane. I need to fix the weather stripping on the front door. Meow, 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 meow. Boy, oh, boy, I tell you. All right, everybody, here you go. For Iron Lion's sake, before before anybody, before he leaves, anyway, I, it sounds like maybe he's on his way out someplace, but I'm going to give you all my my magical healing gaze, okay? What you're going to do is just look carefully at the screen. I'm going to look at you with my healing gaze, my loving eyes, my loving, nurturing, warm, accepting eyes, and my healing gaze, and I'm going to inspire in you feelings of spiritual wholeness, oneness, completeness. Okay, here we go. There. There you go. Whatever was ailing you before has now been healed thanks to my healing gaze. You know, I've got so many testimonies. People say, I was in a wheelchair and Eric looked at me with this healing gaze and I got up and I walked away from that wheelchair. You know. Turns out they were just playing around in the wheelchair in the first place. They didn't need to be in the wheelchair. But regardless. They didn't, they didn't injure themselves while being in the wheelchair and seeing my healing gaze. So it's at least preventative. It does, yeah. <sighs> Eric turns water into fine. <laughs> So, anyway, basically we're waiting for Rachel to get up. We're also doing a little chores. Oh, look, here it is. Here's the mail lady. Let me get this envelope. I gotta mail this envelope. To a secret person whose name's on the back. You can't see that part. Well, that was silly. I ran up there, she went back over here. So, uh, I got this piece of mail that's going straight into the trash can. This is where we bought Rachel and my wedding rings.
which we use to get married. You're supposed to have one of those to get married, supposedly. All right. Thought I was about to be kidnapped. No, the mailman lady is not going to kidnap me. She just wants to complain about the mud by my mailbox, which I need to fix, though. <sighs> it's another thing I should get in town. Yeah, I got to walk up the driveway and back, you know. I got my mail sent away. So, that's good. That way, uh, Comedy Flu will get his picture of his soulmate in the mail. Because for those of you who don't know, one of my powers is a healing gaze, which I just demonstrated a little while ago. But I also have the power of drawing someone's soulmate. I have a lot of powers, really. I could transubstantiate bong rips. So uh, I can wear the same overalls for many, many days at a time without washing them. It's one of my powers. I can wear them for so many days without washing them that uh, I can smell them just sitting down like, oh, these are ripe. Uh, that's the ripe overalls. Uh, do I like root beer? Yes, I do like root beer. Night hearing is another power. I can hear things at night. <laughs> John L., you got a wonder point for that superpower. Sure, I can show you some, some of the drawings I've done of people's soulmates. Some of them requested to receive them by, by a mail. And if they live in the United States, I have indicated I will send you a picture. I believe Sean L. received a picture of his soulmate already in the mail. All right. So this is Natasha Godfrey Ashford's soulmate, Tam Hart and Parton. Okay. This is Cody's soulmate. Or, uh, Cody, maybe is their name. I don't know who's soulmate. He doesn't say. This is Chris Chapman's certified soulmate, Carol. And what people are encouraged to do when I when they get the picture of their soulmate is just to walk around with the picture like this and look and see if they see that person, you know. And you can see Carol, she's I'm telling a fun story. She's like that kind of person. Here's Blue Elvis's soulmate, Sarah. It's spelled a li little differently than you normally would see it spelled. Well, that's good. So that way she can keep her eye out for Toby, Bob, Bob and Bob and Yob or something like that. <laughs> Here's a leprechaun I drew for St. Patrick's Day. Here's Chad Linton's soulmate, Linda Cormundan. She's a busty lady, Linda Cormundan, as you see. Tyra Harris' soulmate. Named Jordo Peru. And this is Cody's soulmate, Kirk F. Flapjacks. All right. He loves and respects Cody. This is Boba Fett's soulmate. Rukshala. As you see, she's got a shirt on that says Boba's Boobas. This here is Kevin Soulmate Crystal. Okay. This is Carlos Paeva's Soulmate Juanita. Oh, Carlos Paeva. That's what she's saying. 
This is Isaiah Rude's soulmate, Fran. She's paralyzed from the waist down. That's okay. This is Money's soulmate, Angela Lansbury. No, just incidental, no relation to the actress, Angela Lansbury, just to make that clear. Oh, it's, it's on the internet. I'll put you a link to it. It's got a fun video, too. It's probably because you spelled it with two G's. But I believe it's only spelled with one G here. Yeah. That was your problem. You spelled it with two G's, I bet. You can't expect to make anything work in life if you spell things with two G's. Here's the link to it. Oh, somebody else posted it, it looks like, already. Well, thank you, Lou. If you're the one who posted it. Um... Now, here's the soulmate of Dee Kearns. As you see, she's saying, squee. <laughs> oh, we'll get to yours, K.E. We will get to yours. I don't remember who soulmate this is, but this is Clarson Hughes. Yeah, it's spelled like that. I should put it with two Gs, too, you know. I'm Clarkson Hughes. That's how Clarkson Hughes talks. And this is Lurdy Groupoon. This is your mama's besties soulmate. Lurdy Groupoon. This is Qualsy Lickens. Quasi Lickens is a horizontal soulmate. She's sunbathing on top of a wall. This is Maggie Tartakalis. This is Bartley Pummings. Bartley Pummings. Good morning, darling. And this is Show Media Soulmate. Lessie Donkers. She's a little low hanging. Well, that's because you spelled it with one G. Oh, right. Not to mention Elaine's soulmate, Kevin. He's really into Big Red. And uh, K.E.'s soulmate, Ann Bohr. Ann Bohr, sure, Ann Bohr's got a bit of a weak chin. But it's not really so much weak as it is down here. <laughs> See? It's in an unusual place. None of us is perfect. So those are some soulmates. I hope you enjoyed them. Oh, <laughs> you're not wrong, Bruno. You are not wrong. <clears throat> you know, I think anybody would be pleased to go out with Tim Harton Parton. He's a handsome, good looking fellow. Who wouldn't, who wouldn't enjoy going out with Tim Hart and Parton? <coughs> no, this is not, this is not bullying, K.E. Okay. Look, if you were to see him, K.E., from the other side, I'm sure you'd realize how handsome he really is. There are no bad vibes allowed because 
I just doubled the bad juju defenses this morning, or nearly doubled them, by adding Twist Tie Girl, armless still, though she may be, by adding Twist Tie Girl to the Twist Tie Guy defenses that we already have in the front. Maybe someday they'll make a beige colored or gray colored Twist Tie Baby. We'll find out. So, you don't have to worry about any bad juju getting in this house, KE. I've got double defenses. I've got Twist Tie Guy, and now I've doubled up our defenses today. Yeah, she's still armless and boobless, but that's going to change, Rachel. That's going to change. I'm going to work on her further. I just, I need more white Twist Ties is what I need. I sacrificed my... 2025 trend no circle and well look KE he's got a bold chin it's just not in the middle of his face <laughs> all right well you know it's possible that Anbor has died uh, since I last drew your soulmate if I draw, if I were to try to draw another soulmate for you and I were able to do so, that would mean that Anbor has incidentally happened to um, die. Well, now, it, it wouldn't, you, you have no power over whether he dies or not. I'm just saying I'd be able to determine that once I were to attempt to draw your soulmate again. If I were able to draw your soulmate, that would mean that incidentally Anbor is dead. If I couldn't, then it, he's still alive. It's not, it's not, a, it doesn't cause anybody's death. It's just, it's a power that reveals itself in this way. Because if your soulmate that I've already drawn dies before you get to meet him, then you're issued a new soulmate. <laughs> Bruno says, and Boris. Oh. Has a Roman nose. It's Roman all over his face. <laughs> all right. You want to see if I can draw you a new soulmate? I'll have to check and see. It's possible. You know, given, given the displacement of Anbor's chin, it's quite possible that I... I uh, Imaged him shortly after a horrific accident, you know. So maybe it is, maybe he did die already. Let's see. Let's see if uh, I have the power to draw you a new soulmate, KE. Okay. Uh, oh, I do see it. I do see a new soulmate in your future, actually. It looks like R.I.P. Anbor. I'll have to put that on his picture, R.I.P. Your new soulmate, though, I think you're going to be really pleased with him. He's a good-looking fellow. He's also a little bit, like, too cool for school. He's got rather long arms. He's got some high waisted pants. But he's also showing a little belly button from his shirt. And 
El name. His name, I think. It's got kind of a strange name. I'm not sure why his best name is this, but his name is Lunestro Skyrizzi. Lunestro Skyrizzi. No relation to the drug by the same name, okay? So here he is, KE. That's your new soulmate. Lunestro Skyrizzi. He's a handsome fellow. Oh, he even got himself an ear. How do you like that? Now he has ears. I heart K E. That's what his shirt says, too. See? Lunestro Skyrizzi is your soulmate. Now I'm going to have to do the following. <laughs> Anbor. R.I.P. Question mark to 2024. I'm not sure how old he was. Or Anbor. We don't know what he died of either. Obviously, my superpower can't inform me about that. You just it, you just got incredibly lucky that your soulmate was on his deathbed when I drew your first soulmate. No, it's fine. He was already obviously on his deathbed, you know. So yeah, he's got this one's got plenty of chin, right, Bruno? We can see that. Yeah, and well, it, he never did experience real love, but that sometimes happens. And it, we have nothing to do with the fact that we just kind of had to peek in on a sad story already in progress, right? There was this guy, he just got in a car crash that explains his displaced chin. And um, in fact, you know, I may have caught him in his last breaths. I may have, that's maybe why he's only ahead is it was, I caught it right, right as his head was being decapitated as possible. So, um, anyway, now we know, we know the sad fate of Anbor. But, fortunately, he was just an extra, yeah. He had on the red suit in Star Wars. Fortunately, now, okay, you can keep an eye out for Lunestra Skyrizzi. Sounds like he might be Italian. Again, no relation to the uh, to the drug sky Rizzi. Well, I'm sure Ambor was great, but we didn't have anything to do with his death. Okay, so I keep trying to explain to you. I just report the news. I don't cause it. Just like the weatherman doesn't cause rain to happen. Jeez, I know. Let's blame the weatherman for the weather, why don't we? So, Rachel. Okay, I won't point the camera at you. Okay. It's pointed this way, don't worry. It's right up here, right in my wrinkles. Um, you are a pantsless petunia, huh? <laughs> yeah, they're downstairs. Um, what I want to say to you is, are we going to town or what? We should, right? Yeah, I think we probably should. Okay. That's a beautiful butterfly. Oh, what a beautiful butterfly. Everybody loves the beauty of butterflies. So anyway, K.E., you are welcome. Not everybody in life, very few people, get to be gifted not once, but twice, by the mystical soulmate seeing vision of Eric. From what I understand, uh, the 
it's how Elaine and Chris Chavin got together. Is Elaine was looking at his picture of Kevin and thought Chris Chavin looked a lot like Kevin. Figured I must have gotten the name wrong. It's possible. Sometimes I do get the name wrong, but, you know, especially when there's similar sounds like Chris Chapin, Chapin, Kevin, you know, they sound very similar. I could have gotten that wrong. On the other hand, maybe she was just wishful thinking. She was like, well, he looks kind of like Kevin. It's hard to say. I can't believe there's still any snow. I could totally be outside right now with no jacket on at all. I feel perfectly comfortable. And yet there's snow on the ground. Like, if you look over here, you can see we still got some snow on the shade. Still got quite a bit on the deck over here. But, it's super warm. So, sometimes there ain't no explaining nothing. We got a caterpillar crawling up the wall here. Determined to become a butterfly. We got another one crawling up the windowsill here. Also presumably determined to become a butterfly. Once the butterflies really come out, they've been delayed by this late snow, I guess. Then you'll see just a whole bunch of them all around here. Yeah, this is a super nice day where it's cool enough that you still have patches of snow on the ground. But it's definitely warm enough for shirt sleeves. Yeah, it's a busy day in the forest. Lots of birds chirping, little bugs flying around, sound of the stream down below. It's a very pleasant day. Well, I can't just leave the vacuum out like that. It's time for me to put the vacuum away. I did get some vacuuming done. Now that Rachel's up, we'll transition to the next activity of the day, which probably will involve us going into town. We need to get a fluorescent reflective sign for that house. I think what I'll do is I'll take a picture of our little sign and say we need one of these by saying this number. Okay. Well, that was fun going outside. And we'll go back inside momentarily here. I'm presuming Rachel will have her pants on by now. We'll just put that in the trash. <clears throat> and that's one cached thing of grapefruit juice.
I just vacuumed it. I'm gonna get more shield. I'm gonna re vacuum right there before I get the vacuum. Right. What is the intro of Superman? Super, 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 Superman. You're a super, 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 Superman. You're a Superman with superpowers. That's why they call you Superman. He goes like that. What's that, darling, for what? That, what did you say, Parlor Morning? Oh, I said to um, Trouble, don't follow your sister, but he has nowhere else to go. Yeah, he needs to go. Now, you're in a t shirt, you think it's, you think it's warm enough to wear a t shirt? or? I mean, it is warm enough. Super, super, super man. You're a super, super, super man. You're a super, super, super man. And you got super power. <laughs> that's how it goes, right? I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. Hi, Blue Elvis. All right, time to put the vacuum away. Back in the old vacuum closet. I'm not done vacuuming or anything. Just vacuum up on top of here. Super, super, super man. You're a super, super, super man. That's such a great theme song. <laughs> Makes me want to watch some Superman really badly. Oh no, I stink. Well, it looks like somebody, namely me, is going to have to put on some deodorant. After all, the only person who wouldn't have to put on deodorant sometimes would be a super, super, super man. He's a super, super, super man. All right, let's put on some deodorant, everybody. Next thing I'm going to teach you how to put on deodorant. First, get some deodorant. Next... Put it this under your shirt like this. Next, put it on by rolling it around here, smushing it all over the place. All right. This is how you put on deodorant without showing your boobs. Because I know it's spring break still, but. I mean, I admit I am getting the urge now. All right, for you guys who wanted it, here you go. Spring break! Spring break! There you go. 
This is spring break action for you. You know you wanted it. Now you got it. It's about as hot as spring break action gets, you know. Cause it's some hot, hot spring break action. No, my boobs are totally straight. All right, now I'm gonna put on, I'm gonna put on this rug down here. All right, so I'm shaking this out pretty good outside already. Give it a little extra shake there, but it's a lot easier to shake this off outside than it is to vacuum. There we go. Where's the cat? asks Taylor Morgan. I will show you the cat. Did I take my medicine today? I didn't have any medicine to take. I mean, I smoked some weed. Does that count? There's the cat. There's one of our two cats. His name is Trouble, his game is Trouble. And everything is the same as Trouble. Okay. He have eating the cats. If you wanna like troll and stuff and like diss me and you know, burn. You're going to need to be a little more fluent in English. Are you accusing me of eating my cat? Uh, <laughs> I was going to eat that cat. I would have eaten it a long time ago, I suspect. Because he certainly is a pain in the butt. Instead of eating him, I have to watch him eat as he wants me to do right now. Watch the cat eat. We don't really have any choice after all. There you go, some more kitty. Captain of the kitty squad. Yeah, we're back here again. I know, if you've been around this live stream before, you already know that we spend an, an inordinate amount of time watching the cat eat. But that's just our cross to bear in life, you know? He's a controlling cat, a difficult cat. But, uh, you know, we love him anyway. Yes, we do. We do have you, Trouble. Even though you're so much trouble. For those who don't know, our cat does have AIDS. It's true. He has cat AIDS. Also known as FIB. Feline AIDS. So, you know, obviously he was a stray before he conquered our family. So we don't know how he got cat AIDS. But he doesn't like to talk about it. He just says to me, leave the past in the past, I see. So 
So I do. Just pay me while I eat my food. Okay, Purple, I will. I already told you my name is Leo Payaso. Yes, you're a good kitty. So presumably Rachel is getting ready to go. Sorry, I took so long. Oh, that's fine. I'm watching the cat eat, you know. Aww. You know how he likes that. And uh, then I guess why don't we go into town? But why don't we go to Sportsman's Cafe on the way into town and get That's some That's a nice idea. It's been a little bit since we've been there. <coughs> I'm hungry. I titled this, let's clean up and make lunch. But I did some cleaning up, but I didn't do any making lunch, so. Well, I mean, you did a lot of cleaning up, so making lunch could be done by someone else. That's true. All we have to do is exchange with, with, with them some dollars for some food, and we should be fine. Okay, so let me wrap this up here shortly. Just sit down here. The cat is chilly. Tiffany is fine. She's chilling as well. Yeah, this really is an alpha cat. Boob man, nice suit. Thanks, it's overalls actually. But hello. If you get some life lessons, you look very wise. Well, I have one piece of advice that everybody seems to appreciate. Nobody seems to think it doesn't apply to them. And that is poop when you can. Yeah. Poop when you can. Don't wait. Don't wait uh, till you have to poop to poop. If you can poop now, poop now. You know. So that's one piece of advice. Yeah, like why not, you know? Yeah, might as well. Poop while you can. Yeah. So, uh, remember the following as well. That... Um... If you wait till later, it might, it might stay. It might go back up into your butt. You don't know when it's going to be ready to come out again. So anyway, we will talk to you after lunch, after the, the town. And then we will be back after that. And then we'll probably live stream again. Maybe we'll take a nap. Who knows? Until then, goodbye, good night, and good luck. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese.